Great, and we're recording. So I'll just say welcome again to everybody. Um, it's so great to uh, be together. This is the first Zoom uh, Finding God in Your Body class that we have done in 2021. <laughs> and we are off to a rocky start, are we not? So all the more Im um, Im important it becomes to use the tool and the gifts of yoga and meditation to help stabilize ourselves. So. Um, let me just make sure that I can mute everybody. I can't quite remember. Oh, mute all. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So now, can you all still hear me? Give me a thumbs up for those that have their video. Great. Okay. All right. So let's start as usual on the floor. Spread yourself out on your mat. Lay down. I'm gonna sit, but you're gonna lay down so that I can uh, 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 talk. But you all are gonna be laying flat on your mat and just sort of let the week slide off of you and let your breath, well, find your breath first. Isn't that funny? We have these phrases like catch your breath, find your breath as if you could lose it. But in fact, we do often uh, stop breathing, especially when we're concentrating on things or when we are tense or anxious. So you wanna sort of let the breathing find a rhythm that feels like it's its own rhythm. Oh, here comes somebody else, I'll let them in. Let's see who this is. Anyway, okay, so you're lying down, you're breathing, um, our, our theme today is going to be working on, um, here comes somebody else. Our theme today is going to be uh, working on standing poses. Standing poses uh, give us strength for the journey, which is why I think we need them. So, um, so take advantage always of every opportunity to rest. Um, for those of you that just came in, I am sitting, but everybody else is lying down on their mat and um, letting go. So breathing, kind of take an inventory, like where are you? Like what's happening inside on a physical level, right? Are there particular parts of your body that are talking to you of late or today? Uh, what's going on mentally? Like, what have you been thinking about? Like, what's the wallpaper that's going through your mind? See if you can just sort of notice that and, you know, turn down the volume on it. What's happening in your sort of spiritual life, emotional life? You know, we have all of these different fields that we're constantly managing, whether we're aware of them or not. And this gives you an opportunity to just sort of settle in and see, feel, uh, uh, get where you are. And breathing into all of that, right? Feeling the breath move, not just into your belly and your ribs, but can you feel the breath inside your nostrils? Can you feel the breath in your hands and feet? that as you are inhaling, they are gently expanding. What about the breath inside your mouth, right? Your jaw, your teeth. Can you feel your teeth gently separate as you relax? What about the root of the tongue? We carry a lot of tension in the root of the tongue. So see if you can just let that go. So this is deep, deep letting go, right? Not just the surface level. And just notice what this feels like. It should feel good and it should feel easy, right? This isn't work. Uh, one of my favorite teachers always used to say that letting go of tension is like letting go of a helium balloon. All you have to do is let go of it and it rises up and away. So that's, that should be like just bringing your awareness to something that is tense in your body. All you have to do is that. And then it should, the space, spaciousness and openness and relief should sort of be in its wake as it leaves. 
So yes, memorize on some level what this feels like because you can return to this always, right? One deep conscious breath, knowing what this feels like, you can get back to it anytime you want. All right, so now gently sort of transitioning you're not going to move, you're going to stay right where you are, <clears throat> but I invite you now, laying down on the floor, to stretch your arms above you and your feet below you like you're on the rack, like somebody's got your wrists and your ankles and they're pulling and pulling and pulling and stretching you apart and then just let it all go. And again, stretching and stretching. And you probably have very naturally arched your back, which is what we do to get more length. See if you can still stay stretched out, but pull your belly button down towards the spine, towards the floor. And you'll feel a lot more opening in your shoulders, I'm guessing, maybe in your hips. So you're still trying to stretch, but you're also pulling your belly button down. Yes, good. And release the whole thing. Excellent. Bring your uh, uh, left leg up to your chest and just gently pull it in. So we often begin class like this. I just think this series is so good for stabilizing the lower spine, like that sacrum at the, at the end of your spine and just the whole lower back. And that makes everything more open. So just pulling gently with your arms down on your shin. Or if that's too hard on your knee, you can always put your hands behind the shin and on the back of the thigh, whatever works for you. But you're just breathing and being here and maybe noticing what's going on in your lower back or maybe not, it should feel good. Everybody take a nice deep breath, inhale through the nose. And as you exhale, using your arms and your abs, just bring your nose towards your knee. It doesn't have to get very far. Inhale here. And exhale, put your head back down. Good. Let's do one more of those. Inhale. And as you exhale, bring your nose towards your knee. Mm -hmm. Try to get the tension out of your neck and your shoulders. Let them stay down towards the floor. Good. Inhale here again through the nose. And exhale, put your head back down. Before you release this leg, just gently make a couple circles with your ankle. That left ankle is opening up. Make about four circles or five one direction, and then four or five in the other direction. Good. And then when you've completed with that, just gently let that leg down and stretch your arms above your head again. Good. Release it and then bring the right leg up to the chest. Same thing, either on top of the shin or behind it, whatever works. You're using the strength in your arms to gently squeeze that leg down and breathing. It should feel good and it might feel different on the on this side versus the other side. That's how we that's how we roll, right? We don't manifest tension symmetrically. So notice, right? If there is a difference, what is the difference? Inhaling and on the exhale, bring your nose towards your knee. It won't get all the way there unless you're super open and that's great, but you don't have to. It's more about just the motion. Inhaling and as you exhale, lower your head back down. Good. One more, just like that, inhale. And as you exhale, bring that nose towards the knee. Inhaling here. And on the exhale, put your head back down on the floor. Good. Couples, uh, circles in this right ankle, doesn't matter which direction you go first, just do a few. And you're, you know, you're trying to make it not be too jaggedy, but smooth, and then do a few smooth circles in the opposite direction. Excellent, okay. Release that leg, release those arms back up. 
Nice big stretch here. Good, release the arms, bend your knees. Your feet are together. Let your um, knees open with the soles of the feet together. And you can just let your arms be wherever they ended up. If that's not comfortable, you can bring them out from your side or even, you know, a little down closer to your legs, whatever's comfortable here. You don't really wanna be thinking about your arms right now. Doesn't matter, but everything wants to feel like it's just um, surrendering to the floor. Let gravity and the floor have its way with you. So here again, very naturally, generally, our, our lower back is slightly arched off the floor. That's fine. As we lie here in a minute, I'm gonna invite you to do the same thing we did when we were doing our first big long stretch, which is, let's try it now. Without changing anything, see if you can pull your belly button towards the spine and maybe lay part of that back flatter on the floor. You'll notice it shifts the pelvis, which means the knees might come off, you know, might come away from the floor a little bit. Just feel what that feels like. We have very strong groin muscles that we want to kind of feel are working. So it's like it's pulling your rib cage towards your pubic bone. And that creates a nice stable thing. Meanwhile, the arms are super relaxed. And now let that belly button go so that gravity can, can really do what it wants, right? I want you to feel the difference between when your back is flat and when it's arched. And that's just, both are, both are fine. Just noticing the difference. Good, okay. Nice and easy. Put your hands on the outside of both of your legs so you can use a little bit of strength in your arms to pull them back together. And now bring both knees together up onto your chest and spread your arms wide, right? Like so they come straight up from your shoulders like an airplane. You're gonna take both knees and roll them to the right. My apologies, I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, sorry, Siri is talking to me on my watch. Hilarious, okay. Um, so you want both legs to roll to the right you bring that right arm sort of down towards the legs, to, towards the knee, till you can connect your right wrist and your right knee. The other arm now comes down to the same angle. So if somebody was looking at you from above, your arms would be coming away from your spine at the same angle. So in other words, it's not out straight out from the shoulder the way you started. And then the last thing is gently turn your head to the right. So this should feel, again, nice. It shouldn't feel hard. You're not, um, let the weight of the legs just flop. So if that means they fall a little away from your wrist, that's okay. But you kind of want to start out in that vicinity. Breathing, all you do in this pose is breathe. You're just letting the pose in. And again, what this is doing is um, sort of adjusting your sacrum, your lower spine. And once you get the base, the root of the spine open, everything else opens more easily. So you're just hanging here. We've done this a lot if you've been with me on many of these Zoom uh, yoga classes. And I start my practice every single time with this sequence, although I, I hold them a minute and a half because it just makes a gigantic difference. So just a couple more deep breaths here. Inhaling now and using the strength in your arms and your abs, bring those knees back up to center. And when you get here, kind of rock back and forth to feel like you're sort of evening things out. Bring your arms back up so that they come out perpendicular from your spine. And you're gonna roll the legs to the left. So just let them go. One side might feel very different. Remember now it's the left arm that slides down so that the left knee and the left wrist can meet. And then the right arm follows suit and comes down so it's at a similar angle from the spine. And then everybody turns their head to the left. I am not going to turn my head to the left because I want my voice to be able to be picked up. 
by the mic and then I'd be looking away, but you all are going to do that. And breathe here. Now notice this side. So for me on this side, I've got a lot more tension stuff going on in my left hip. So it's hard for me to let it go. So I have to be super intentional about checking in to make sure that I'm not sort of subtly, unconsciously holding it. Anyway, you get to be this, this um, narrator of your story this morning, and you get to craft your own experience. What you're looking for is an experience of complete and total relaxation and release. That's all you need to do here. The rest is done for you. Breathing. Yes. I've said, I think maybe every time we've done these, that these poses, these sort of loose twists, are really good to do in bed if you're having trouble sleeping. Couple more breaths, nice and easy. Good, okay. Arms give you strength, abs give you strength. Engage them before you bring your knees back up to your chest, good. Just wrap your arms now around your knees or if your knees are too, if that's too much, put your hands behind your knees on your thighs. Either way, just rock from side to side and giving yourself a little massage. Good, okay. And then carefully, you'll roll to one side, doesn't matter which one, and you will help yourself get up so that you don't feel anything in your lower back. <laughs> and you don't wanna do anything to shock the system. I'm gonna take my socks off now because we're about to get up and do a little bit of a, a, some Tai Chi exercises just to warm the body up before we get into our standing poses. So I'm gonna step back here. I know my head is cut off, but that's okay because you don't need to see my head. Um, so what you're going to do is you're gonna separate your feet hip width apart. And the first thing you're gonna do is reach up and you're, it's like you're grabbing an apple off the tree with one hand, it doesn't matter which one, and then dropping it in the pretend bucket that's by your foot. And at the same time as you're dropping the apple in one foot, you're reaching up to grab the other one. These are just images from the Tai Chi exercise. It basically gets you stretching from up and down, and this should feel really good. There's a slight bend in your knees, so you're not locking your knees, and you're stretching, and you're reaching, yeah, just back and forth a few more times. Good. Opening up our side waist and our armpits. Yes, good. And just let that stop when you're ready. And I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see what this one looks like. So what you're gonna do now, again, feet hip width apart with just a little bend in your knees, just send your arms back, right? So the motion is back, and back and back. And they're coming forward just because that is the response to the impulse. Send them back and back and back and back. This opens up your lung meridians. All of a sudden you're breathing more deeply and also just gets the chi going, right? You're getting the warmth uh, inside that's sort of building up. Couple more and back and back back and back and then let them stop now on their own motion very hard to do we want to control them see if they can just stop completely on their own really hard to do especially at the end right they're like a little little metronome that wants to finally stop all on its own but i'll be still moving if you're letting them do it good okay nice and easy now Separate your feet just a little bit wider than hip width. So if you're on your mat this way, they might be almost as wide as the mat. And again, bend your knees a little bit more now than a gentle bend because you really want to feel like your center of gravity is low. Then you just let the hips move from one side to the other. And what happens is the sort of centrifugal force, depending on 
how you sort of twist yourself, makes your arms come out. And you just let your arms sort of slap yourself wherever they end up. Again, this is sort of opening up energy centers. And let your head just gently follow and your eyes gently follow sort of in the path of you twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting. And it's all motivated from the action in the hips. And again, we're just sort of waking up the body, getting stuff moving, mm -hmm. circulation. A couple more times. And five, four, three, two, one. And just like we did before, sort of stop the movement of your hips or just let it slow down organically. And then once you stop your hips, your arms continue to go until either you stop them or they finally stop on their own. It's hard. There's that moment of like, oh, I want to control this. See if we can not control it. Okay, excellent. That's our warm up. So now, um, walk up to the, actually stay. Um, you might want to turn your mat so that it is perpendicular to your screen if it isn't already. I think that's easier. Um, and take your feet and step them now about three feet apart. And I just want to say that if we were in the same room, I would probably walk around and tell most of you that that's not really three feet <laughs> because this is odd for us, right? We're not used to doing this, but you really want a good width. Three feet, it's the yardstick, right? It's big. Okay, once you're in here, I want you to feel the sort of stability that you have with your toes facing forward and your hips facing forward. And by what I mean, facing the screen, but also, in alignment with the line of your mat if you have turned it around. So this is really important. We're gonna talk a lot as if you had headlights on your hip bones. And right now your headlights are shining out perpendicular to the line of your mat if you have turned it, okay? So everybody is going to take their left foot and they're gonna turn it out so that it is now in alignment with your with look with the mat and then you're going to take your right heel and shift it back can everybody see what i just did it's subtle but you shift it back right that's going to make more space now between the legs oh but look what happened to our headlights now my headlights are kind of off here at an angle i'm now going to endeavor to bring with my feet in this new position back to perpendicular to the edge of the mat, okay? So if I had headlights, they're shining right at you. Okay, now from this, it, this is sort of your foundation, your base. We're gonna work on triangle pose. Bring your arms up to your shoulders and everybody scrunch your shoulders up by your ears, which is what we don't want, but I want you to feel it. And then now let them relax way away, like major space between your ears and your shoulders, okay? So you can see we've already created one triangle, haven't we? If we look at the floor and the space in our legs. Now, these left fingertips here are going to reach and reach and reach and reach and reach, and it's gonna pull you out as far as you can. Now, you don't want any bending here. So not like this, not, not scrunching and, and curving, but long, really, really long and the right arm is still reaching back behind you. When you can't go any further, you just let that arm drop and it lands wherever it lands. It might be close to your knee, it might be a little lower, but the important thing is to stay long through your waist, just like we were doing in our Tai Chi exercise. And the other arm just comes up. So here you are in another set of triangles, right? Really what we're looking at is, remember triangles like one of the building blocks of geometry. And that's what we're doing here. Trying to stay long through the, through the uh, ribs, the left ribs. And we create another triangle between our hand, which is lightly on this leg, the leg and the ribs. Okay, now you might wanna look down sometimes that kind of eases the neck. It's okay to put your head wherever you want. It's also important sometimes to try looking up. Again, you wanna not crunch this uh, right shoulder up to the right ear. Lots of wingspan space. Breathing. And in standing poses, you wanna have the sense that you're 
almost sort of stretching the legs apart on the mat. Now, to get out of it, you pretend somebody is pulling you up from your top arm and you just sort of lift up effortlessly. Yes, and you're gonna take both feet and bring them back so that they are toes, again, facing the edge of the mat and just let those arms come down and rest for a second. So standing poses are not easy. They look simple sometimes, they're not. And especially if you're really working on trying to understand the pose from inside your body, which is what we're doing. Okay, let's now take the right foot and shift it out so that it's in alignment with the edge of your mat and take your left heel and boom, scooch it back, okay? Now, what happened to your headlights? Like mine, it's very natural, right? When we make a move, they get off, which is okay, but we wanna see if we can endeavor to keep them in alignment now with the sort of that perpendicular line across the mat, okay? Then you bring the arms up, scrunch the shoulders up, which is what we don't want, let them go, yes. And you should feel when you do that, like this line of energy that runs through your arms. Now we're heading to the right. So those right fingertips, it's like somebody's pulling them. You just reach and you reach and you reach and you reach. And if something stops you because it doesn't feel good or that's as far as you can go, that's your spot. That's perfect. Then you let that arm come down, right? Because you want to hang on to the long line of this right side. And then you just bring the other arm up. Good. And head can be down. Head can look forward, head can look up. Try some of each and breathe where you are, right? I love the sense that you feel strength in your legs, right? The legs are strong in standing poses. That's what gives us strength for the journey. And also, though you've heard me say this before, but the legs are the governor of our back, the governors of our back. So if you're having back issues, too much sitting, too much Zoom, too much whatever, too much standing, it's, it's the standing poses and the stretching of the legs that will make lots of difference for your back. So here we are practicing our, our, our geometry, right? Finding triangle pose in our body. One more big deep breath, inhale. And as you come out, it's like somebody's lifting you up from your arm and it should seem fairly easy, good and you let that arm come down, get both feet back with the um, inside edges of your feet parallel. And just right now, uh, why not just put your hands, oh, put your thumbs, how about thumbs, in the crease between the thighs and the torso, and then just bend forward. So let yourself come all the way, so you're not changing anything in the legs. The only thing that's happening is that your hips are pushing back, your tush is pushing back, your back is straight, your thumbs are disappearing inside the crease and you're gonna let yourself come all the way down. Then you can let your hands relax and let your neck and head relax. Like let yourself hang here like a rag doll between these strong straight legs. Always keeping a micro bend in them so we're not jamming back and hyperextending those knees. So just letting yourself breathe. I hope this feels good. Forward bends, always very soothing to the nervous system. Let's everybody walk our hands out now so that our hands are sort of underneath our shoulders. Your back is still straight if you can. And then take that uh, left hand and place it right underneath your face. And the right hand will sweep out and come all the way up. So again, you're just giving yourself a little twist here with the legs in the same position. The hips will shift a little bit, but mostly it's what's happening in the upper back and in your arms. And you're looking, maybe you can see, maybe you can see your uh, right fingertips out of the corner of your eye. Breathing. And as you exhale, let that right hand sweep down and put it underneath where the left hand was. Sweep the left hand up. This should feel good. You know, you just go to where you go and you breathe there. You can't be any place else than where you are. That's the gift of yoga. So as you press down into the floor, that allows you to reach that left arm up, breathing, trying not to let the hips shift too much. They will a little bit. Good, nice and easy. Bring that hand back down one more time. 
right in the center. You're going to let yourself fold again, relaxing the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms. You might even wiggle them a little bit to make sure everything feels nice and relaxed. Good. Now you're going to bring your hands back to your hips. You're going to bend your knees more than, than we have been and then coming up with the knees bent. Good, okay. So triangle is often the very first standing pose that is taught, I think because it's so basic and because it opens up all the long lines of the body. So now we're gonna try one of the warrior poses. We call them, there's warrior one, two, and three, but I think we're gonna do the second one. So we're gonna ask you now to open your feet a little bit more. It's gonna feel pretty weird, um, but try it. And same thing, so we start with, so I scooched my feet out a couple times, right? So the idea is more like four feet now between your feet. And again, I promise you that if I could see you, I can see some of you, but um, you know, it's wider than you think and you'll see why in just a second. All right, taking the left foot, Left toes turn out just like we did before with the triangle pose and right heel shifts back behind. So that will open things up a little bit. Um, headlights again, come back towards, um, so that's perpendicular across the front edge of your mat. Same thing, arms come up. You don't have to scrunch them. I always do just because it kind of reminds me of what, what I'm doing. And the only thing that changes right now from this position is you bend the left knee, just nice and slow. Just go super slow and bend it so that it ends up tracking out over the little toe and the knee ends up over the ankle, okay? And this time, all you do is you turn your head and look out over those left fingertips. Breathing. So a couple things that you don't want you don't want the knee to be too far over, like it really should be right over the ankle, not over the toes. That puts too much stress on the knee. So that's why you need a nice wide stance. And breathe here. So feel the strength in that back leg. This is an amazing position, right? This, this really, it's all about focus. It feels like your shoulders are getting tight. Scrunch them up and let them go again so that energy shoots out the arms. One more big deep breath, inhale here. And as you exhale, just straighten the knee, just so you can feel what that feels like. We're gonna go right back into it. Inhale, and as you exhale, and you can even take a peek, track that knee so that it goes out towards the little pinky toe side of the foot, right? Because again, if, you, if you're too far internal, it'll hurt the knee. You want the knee over the ankles, breathing. Now we're gonna try what's called reverse warrior or peaceful warrior, inhaling and bring that left hand up and just at the same time, the right hand goes down and maybe rests on the back of your leg and you reach up and over. Breathe, again, we get a beautiful stretch through the whole left side here. The legs haven't moved, feel the strength in that back leg. Strength for the journey. Where else do we say that? In communion, right? When we take the Eucharist, we get strength for the journey. Good, let's gently, don't change your legs, come right back into our warrior two. Excellent, and straighten the leg. We're gonna give you a break in one minute. Let's go right back into it, inhaling, and as you exhale, track that knee out over those toes. This time, you're gonna put your left elbow on top of your left knee, and the right arms is gonna come up and over, and you're looking to create one long line of energy from the right foot to the right hand. Now you can look up in front of that right bicep. You can look forward or you can look down. I invite you to try some of each and just feel like the how much power this gives you, right? There's a reason why they call these poses warrior poses. They give you strength. Good, okay. Let's everybody take a nice deep breath, inhale. And as you exhale, come back first to your warrior pose and then straighten the leg and then turn your feet and let your arms come down. That feels good, huh? Okay, get those feet back in line first just so you can kind of stabilize. We're gonna do just the opposite. So right toes shift, 
so that that right foot now is in alignment with the side of your mat, left heel shifts back. It's not a big move, but it really does make a difference. Get your headlights straightened up so that they are perpendicular to this line. Arms come up, inhale, and as you exhale, track that right knee out over the little toe side of the foot and right over the ankle if you can, right? And then turn your head, looking out over your right fingertips. So breathing here. It's a strange pose, right? To kind of feel comfortable in, but see if you can feel, it's like, like, you're, like you're a sumo wrestler. I, I, only in that they, there's so much weight and power in this wide base, right? Breathing and feel the strength in that back leg. Feel the opening in the hips, right? It's like both thighs are kind of rolling open. Let's just come out now so that you can have a little bit of a break. Inhaling, we'll go right back into it. And as you exhale, track that little, that uh, knee over the little toe side of the foot. Good. This time we'll do reverse warrior. So that right arm reaches up as the left arm comes down and rests on the back leg. And just feel the sense of openness, almost, um, again, there's a kind of surrender. I always think of ballet dancers in this pose because it feels so beautiful, <laughs> but still with this super strong base. Inhaling, looking up, exhaling, see if you can come back to warrior two. Anytime your shoulder's still tight, Scrunch them up and let them go. Good. One last thing here, okay? This time we're gonna take your right arm and you're gonna let it rest on your right knee, thigh, and the other arm is gonna come up and over. And you wanna see if you can find a one long line between that left pinky and your left pinky toe now, another thing you can do here, again, when we're reaching, generally, we kind of, we kind of um, hunch our shoulder up. See if you can keep reaching and relax your shoulder at the same time without changing the line. It's good to be aware of. One big deep breath here, inhaling. And as you exhale, let yourself come back to warrior two. So we haven't changed the legs at all from when we got in here. Nice and easy. Oh, straighten that leg shift the feet so that you're you can bring them a little closer again if you want to inside edges of the feet are parallel hands on the hips come forward yes and again just sort of let yourself dangle here you can do it whatever you want with your arms just let go your legs are still straight with your micro bend and when you're ready you're going to walk your hands both hands over to your left foot and you can hold the foot, hold the shin, whatever, but it just sort of draw the line that's down the center of your torso towards that leg. And you might even, you know, feel a little twist here. You can just hang out here. Some people may like to open their arm up, but that's not necessary. It's more just sort of getting the, the chest toward that left side. Good, come back into the center dangle for a minute and then when you're ready walk your hands over to the right ankle foot wherever you want to put them could be on the shin doesn't matter and then you sort of use the leverage you have to draw as they say like if there was a dotted line up the front of your body you're trying to lay it on that right leg breathe some people may choose to sort of open up this arm but if that doesn't feel like, feel good, don't do it, whatever. Okay, nice and easy, come back to the center. Good, and I like to sort of bring my torso out and then put my hands up, bend the knees to give you some sort of way to move so you don't scrunch your lower back and come on up, great. Okay, now we're gonna try what's called pyramid pose. So again, we're going to turn the uh, left toes out and this time you're gonna turn the back heel all the way so that your headlights are now facing the end of your mat, not the wide one. Now it's hard to do it because this hip, this right hip is back, right? Because the right leg is back. 
But if you can try to even those headlights out shining towards the front, that'll be great. So now let's bring the arms up over the head. Let's kind of stretch our hands. We can do whatever you want, but just bring your arms up. How about that? And you're gonna push from the hips back to try to come out with a flat back. If that's too much, it's okay to leave the hands on the hips. You get to choose. Hands are out here or hands are here. Whenever you get to a place that feels like where you're gonna be, you're gonna let your arms come down and rest on your shin. So we're constantly in this pose, trying to bring that back hip forward and the front hip back to make them more even. So this is an intense pose and you will feel it in both legs, but a lot in the front leg because it's opening and stretching the um, hamstring. So breathe here. Some people, may want to sort of let their back bend and come down further by resting your hands on the floor and just letting yourself round. That feels better in a way and different. Try that for those of you that want to. Breathe in. Yep. Again, strengthen the legs. You really want to feel, even though the the uh, front leg is being stretched a lot. The strength is coming from the back leg. So you really want to feel how it is grounded in the floor and using the stickiness of the sticky mat to kind of like stretch the mat in between the legs. Good, nice and easy. You're just gonna let yourself, I think it's helpful to have your hands on your hips to come back, uh, uh -huh. so standing, whoa, and then turn around and we'll go right into the other side. So right toes go out and left, toe, left heel goes back. And this time we're trying to line up our headlights towards the end of the mat, not in alignment with the side of the mat. So from here, think front hip goes back, back hip goes front. And then you can either have your hands up or your hands on your hips, either way. Just start to bring your chest out in a flat back by feeling the strength in these hips. You're gonna to get to a place where you just can't go any further and that's fine. Breathe there and let your hands come down on your thigh. You're not really putting a lot of weight or shin or wherever it ends up. You're not putting a lot of weight there, but you are sort of propping yourself a bit. And you wanna feel the straight lines of both legs and the spine. So breathe in here, neck is right in alignment with the rest of the spine. And then when you are ready, if you want to, you can start to round the spine and let the hands come down. And this might be too intense, might not feel good. What you don't want to do is bend the knees, okay? Those stay straight. So maybe you don't come all the way down, right? Or maybe you just bend a little. Some people will be able to sort of feel the, remember that dotted line, kind of lay it on the front leg, possibly. So, breathing here. Think always in this pyramid pose, um, front hip, back, back hip, front. So you're trying to get as much evenness and squareness in the hips as possible. Good, okay. Coming back up, bring the hands to the hips and help yourself come up. Good, okay, nice and easy. All right, we're gonna come back forward again. It's always a good thing to do. But when you come down, I'm gonna invite you to walk your feet a little further here. And this time, we're gonna bend one knee just a little and then bend the other. Just a couple, you're just gonna kind of go back and forth, nice and slow. You wanna sort of grease those joints, those hip joints. Yep. And now you're gonna try something now with your feet a little bit wider. So they should be about maybe four feet wide. You're gonna walk your hands with the, with the fingers facing the same direction as the toes down here and see if you can use the sticky mat to bring your, the crown of your head towards the floor. It might touch the floor, it might not touch the floor. Doesn't matter, 
but you're using the strength in your arms and the leverage against the sticky mat to come down like this. Breathe. Some people might also choose to turn their hands the other direction. So now your hands are facing your the opposite direction. Your, your fingers are facing the opposite direction from your toes. And then you can just sort of see how far they can go without falling over. Breathe in. Okay. Whichever way your hands are facing, um, bring, your, bring your hands now so that they're back underneath your shoulders and just toe heel, toe heel, toe heel your feet back to, um, how about underneath your hips with the inner edges of your feet parallel. Knees can be bent or straight and just let yourself dangle in this position, this forward bend. <sighs> Good. And however you want to, nice and easy, come down to sitting now. You're gonna cross your legs. It doesn't matter which one is in front. At the moment, I happen to have my left one in front. Immediately cross it the other way. So we generally, um, we, we do the automatic behavior, right? And so if you're used to putting your left one in front or your right one in front, you will do that. So we're surprising the body by now putting the other one in front. So we're just gonna do a couple last stretches here and then get back down. So, you know, um, I hope you feel a bit invigorated. So standing poses are hard and um, and they they look sort of like you're not moving much, but they, but they build strength and we need it, right? We're not, we're not out of this situation yet in terms of the pandemic and, uh, and we need our strength and our clarity and our focus. So, okay, with this, let's say you have your right leg in front. You're just gonna use your hands for a second on both knees and, and I'll turn sideways so you can see what it looks like. But again, we're gonna try to arch our spine, right? Like you're almost doing, um, the cow pose, right? You're getting this big arch in your lower back here, your heart lifts, your nose points to the ceiling, and then you're gonna do just the opposite. You round that spine out. And now your nose is sort of reaching for your pubic bone. So go back and forth a couple times on your breath, inhaling, you're arching, exhaling, you're rounding. Really let the breath out and really let the breath in as you arch and open up the front side of your body. And then as you exhale, you're rounding and opening up the back side of your body. Yes, great, okay. Then come back to sort of your neutral spine and just take your hands on the mat in front of you and just walk them out in front. This will not get into your hips a little bit, that's the idea. And the whatever leg is in front, you're going to feel it more in that here. So hands go as far as they can comfortably. You let the head go, the shoulders. Let yourself drape over your legs here. Breathing. Really breathe into that belly, that lower back, the sides. You can feel the ribs open. Good, and nice and easy, walk yourself back up and redo the legs so the other one is in front now. Same thing, you're just gonna sit tall. We're not gonna do the uh, arching, we're just gonna walk out, hands in front, let them slide out in front of you. Doesn't matter how far you get, you just get to where your body says, okay, that's enough. You might even back up a little, right? You know, it's not about pushing at your edge all the time, right? It's a little bit like, oh, there's my edge. So that's just across the edge is too much. So what, so what if I back up a little bit, right? What a metaphor for life, eh? So letting yourself uh, again fold forward, breathing. Breathing into that belly. 
And of course, what happens is as you breathe and as you relax, you, you might find yourself going lower, not because you are trying to go lower, but because you are relaxing and gravity is, is working on you. Good, nice and easy. Come back up, good, excellent. All right, you're gonna get back on the floor. So however you wanna do that, but take it nice and easy. I always like to kind of, you don't have to do this. You can certainly support yourself as you unroll, but I sometimes like to see if I can do it nice and slow using those groin muscles and my lower abs there and see if I can lay down each vertebra one at a time on the floor. That might be too much. All right, here we are where we started. Open up those arms. You get really long on the mat. Get stretchy, 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 stretchy here. Yeah, and release. Good, bend the knees. You're going to um, make sure that your feet are hip width apart. This is sort of a counter pose, some of what we've been doing. We're gonna do a little bridge here. So feet are parallel, but hip width apart. Knees are parallel, but hip width apart. I like to um, have my hands, arms by my side, but I really like to get the sense that my upper arms, shoulders and elbows are doing most of the work. So I actually bend my arms and just let my hands be up here, pressing right now your, um, the backs of your arms into the floor to sort of open your chest. You can feel how that's happening. And then pressing into the floor to lift up your hips. And while you're up here, you can kind of roll those shoulder blades sort of underneath you. And you get this beautiful opening in the heart center, but also lifting up in the hips. Don't let the knees play out, right? That's kind of what we want to do. You really want to see if you can keep the knees in line with the hips and tuck that tailbone and lift it up. Breathe. Yeah. Now, the other thing, what's going on with your neck? There is a natural curve behind the, we call it the cervical spine there, right? Don't jam that curve down. You can hear in my voice what happens when I jam the curve down. When you let the natural curve be there, my voice is normal. Okay, come up onto your tippy toes now and see if you can lift your hips even higher. Again, bring the knees closer to one another. I don't mean like knock knees, but I do mean like keep them in hip width. Good, and now put those hands down by your side and slowly lower yourself down onto the mat, making sure that there's new space between each vertebra. It's very hard to do once you get past your waist. Those um, lumbar vertebrae, they all kind of want to work as one, or sometimes we want to let the sacrum even drop before the waist is done. Good, beautiful. Let's just do a couple of breathing bridges too. So inhale, lift the arms, exhale, lift the hips. This is just like a little flowy thing. Inhale, bring the arms back down. Exhaling, come up onto the toes and lower yourself down. We're just gonna do one more like that. Inhale, lift the arms above the head. Exhaling, lift the hips, press the feet down to get the hips up in the air. Inhaling, the hands come down. Exhaling, toes, come up onto those toes and lower yourself down one vertebra at a time. Beauteous. Bring the knees into the chest. Wrap your arms around your knees or behind them. Rock from side to side. Good, and now set yourself up for final relaxation. So that means you might wanna put on socks you might want to cover yourself up with your blanket if you have it. Just take the time to make sure that you're really going to be comfortable. So you all are sp spread out on the floor, but I'm just sitting up so that I can better be heard by the microphone. So notice what is going on in your body right now. What do you feel? Remember, we took an inventory at the beginning of class. So what's new? What's new? What's different? What's, what's released? This um, Shavasana, right? Corpse pose that we do at the end of class always. 
um, is super important because of the way it integrates the new information that has just been released. But it's also this sort of in between time, right? It's like, it's like liturgy, it's like worship, it's like going to church, it's sort of time set apart, time to let God do God's thing inside of you and outside of you, right? Because of course, whatever we've got going on inside often is what we experience on the outside. So obviously peace within creates peace without. So you have just um, strengthened yourself. You've given yourself courage. You have um, energized your body in alignment. And now you're letting it all go and you get to feel the uh, dividends of that. So just bask in that. Marinate in that for just a minute. And I will be quiet for, um, a minute or two so you can have silence. So gently now beginning to deepen your breath. That's the only thing that changes. And you can feel the breath move into those darker, deeper places in the body. And you can sort of memorize again you know, you say when you learn something by heart, right? It's an interesting phrase. Memorize, right? This by, by feeling it, by knowing it, by breathing into it. This is available to you all the time because you know it, it's in there. You've, you've done it, you've experienced it. You just need to breathe consciously and let go and say, oh yeah, that's what I want. I want that feeling that I had at the end of yoga. So beginning to wiggle your fingers and your toes now, whatever you like to do to kind of move and, you know, be attentive to the body, respond to what it needs. Some people like to pull their knees up to their chest. Some people like to do a twist. Some people like to lie there longer. Just whatever, whatever feels like the way. Some people like to stretch like we did at the beginning. Whatever you need, give that to yourself now. And then eventually, Roll to one side, doesn't matter which one, and pause on your side. Make a pillow with that arm, whatever side you roll to, so that your head's not dragging, and bend your knees loosely, right? So I call it like the loose fetal position, and let yourself pause, stop there. Like, like that's the destination, even though where we're headed is getting up, but stop and breathe on your side made a transition, let it in, let it happen. 
Then, after a few conscious breaths there, using the strength in your arms, right? Try to keep your eyes closed, but make your next transition from your side back up to some kind of sitting position. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if you have your legs crossed or open or wide. You are on the floor and you want to scooch up next to your couch, whatever, that's fine. What you do want to do though, is to feel the shoulders over the hips, right? That really lovely alignment and your head kind of floating over it and your, your pelvic girdle being held square on the floor. And this effortless, we hope, or certainly more effortless um, sense of uplift through the whole torso. So you have lengthened and you have strengthened in this time. And you have balanced, right? Body, mind, heart, spirit, all of it. So uh, thanking yourself, right? And thanking one another that we can do this together. And thank you, uh, Holy Comforter, for this beautiful space that I'm in. And even thank you, God, for this cold, clear day we see, see it all, and may we hold it all, right? Our hearts can hold it all. That's a lot, a lot to take in. So breathing. And if your hands are together in front of your heart, that's lovely, you don't have to. But it is the divine in you that allows me to recognize the divine in myself. Namaste. So I will stop the recording. Yes.